All right, so log entries is a log management comp uh, tool. It's a SaaS based tool, it's in the cloud obviously. Um, and basically the idea behind it uh, is that it, it's a little bit of a step from traditional log management tools where you were very much kind of in, in the weeds uh, dealing with you know, search, uh, regex, very, very technical. Kind of you usually had one specialist sitting in a room who dealt with it and everything went through them. Um, for those of you who don't know, log management logs are uh, machine data generated by your application and kind of the stack underlying it. So the kind of infrastructure under that, uh, basically detailing all the interactions, the calls, uh, pretty much all the kind of little details coming through the application, the entire stack that kind of tells the story of what is going on in your application. You can use it to gauge the health of your application, what's happening, uh, errors, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, currently we deal with about 10 billion blog events per day. Um, a good sized company can kick out a few gigabytes of data a day very, very easily. Um, so the idea is it, it's a bit of a big data work uh, to figure out you know, what this all means. Um, you know, as I was saying, uh, traditionally, the model was very much searching through, finding what you're looking for, uh, which required you to A, know what you were looking for, and B, uh, have understanding of this kind of language behind it to search cleanly. What we're doing is trying to make it a little more open. Um, so to start, you have your actual logs. Uh, it's a demo environment, so there's not any live data, but if you can see, pretty much, this is what they look like right here. Uh, so this is your main screen come in, you see your logs, uh, and I'll just kind of run through the, I don't really have much of a presentation, I'll just run through the demo. Um, the main thing that pretty much is the base level you have to have to, to do this kind of thing is search. Uh, traditionally, regex was the base of search. Uh, so you had regular expressions, you had to know, and, you know embedded, uh, kind of nesting your searches, and really figuring that out. Uh, what we've done is added a couple levels to this. So we have simple search, think basically Google, uh, we use Boolean operators, so and, or, not, uh, parentheses. We have uh, regex if you are so inclined to use it, which I personally am not. Um, and then we have what's really cool, I think, is our field level search, where we will actually pull out uh, anything in your logs that has an equal sign or is JSON formatted, uh, so that we'll automatically just pull it out. Uh, we have a pre-processing tier that your data hits before it ever goes into your database here. So what that allows us to do is really do some neat stuff where before you even get the data, we can do a little bit of smart stuff to it. Uh, if you are on the Heroku platform, which we currently support and work on AWS, we will actually apply a whole bunch of alerts and tags and everything to this. Uh, so your data comes in, not just your logs, but a bunch of system data that we've applied to see where everything is. Um, so like I said, field level search, let's say you want to see connect is greater than 10. Uh, like I said, it'll pull up all the places where connect is greater than 10, where your connect time is greater than 10 milliseconds. Um, why is this important? Well, on your own, you just have to search, but what that means is we can uh, make it easy to do things like tags. We allow you to set up custom tags so that you can basically go in to find a criteria. So in this case, say you want to see uh, your SLA is 15 milliseconds for connect time. You can set that up so that every time something came in with a connect time over 15 seconds, you would apply a tag once it matched your uh, search parameters, and you would get data streaming in that was uh, that was tagged just like that. So basically, you see this, and you want to go, okay, I want to see where all my SLAs are reached. Just hit the tag there. It pops up, and you'll see everything. You can run through it. Say you want to see the context behind it. Pop that open. It'll show you what's going on before and after, so you can kind of see what's going on. You can expand this just live. Um, this goes even further because what we can do is now that you have a list of all this stuff and you've set your kind of your parameters, we can set up alerts. So say your SLA is breached and it's happening a few times, what we'll do is actually you can set up to go to your iPhone, by your iOS iPhone, uh, email, or we actually have webhooks so you can send it through that way. Um, which gives you all sorts of different ways to get your alerts. And lastly, graphing. Uh, same thing, you can take these custom events that you've set up and put graphs against it. So in this case, I have one that shows me how my SLAs are doing, uh, warnings and SLA actual breaches, and over time, and it just goes by the time field here. So you can, you can see what's going on there uh, and trending. And really the good part here is it's not just kind of looking back, but with the alerting, with the trending, you can start to see before stuff goes wrong. And hopefully the goal is uh, 
allowing more people to see this data, work with it more easily, and really keep your app running well so that you can fix things and see where they're going before it actually affects your production database, your production application, and therefore your customers. Uh, Matt, any questions? Uh, so if, when I do web development, there's two tools that sort of solve similar problems that I have been using. Yep. It's uh, either AirBridge or something along the lines of that, and uh, New Forever. So I guess what features do you have to sort of hand them out for these uh, competitors do that? Yeah, I, I, that's actually a really good question. Um, so the question was things like AirBreak and New Relic, uh, what do we do that they don't? Um, so it, it, we actually just uh, published a blog post about uh, us with New Relic. We have, and uh, basically the conclusion, I, I personally uh, am a marketing person, um, so I, I, I can't get too in depth. I do know we have several clients that use us with uh, New Relic actually, um, and they're very complimentary. There's, there's details that we pull out that they don't, uh, and there's stuff that they do that we don't. Um, from my understanding, talking with people at uh, CodeShip is one that we're really close with who, who helped us write the article. Um, they use the data a lot together. Um, so uh, the post is there if you want to check it out on their blog. I wish I could answer it stronger than that. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, did, you, did you build your own back end or you hosted on some? I guess that's the real root of the question is about scalability. So like, we, we process about a billion transactions a day. Yep. Uh, So we are on the AWS EC2. Okay. Um, so we have a uh, yeah, ex exactly. We, we let we let people much better at do that. We worry about kind of taking care of your data. So you can handle the fire hose a day. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we uh, we've scaled from uh, the 10 million uh, a day is actually an old number. Uh, we've been growing pretty quickly, so it's much higher than that. Do you ever find that there are spikes in data that can't be Yeah, so actually, um, you know, if we, uh, you know, if uh, Heroku's a big uh, big partner of ours, if there's an event going on there where there's uh, some, some throwing a lot of errors, um, and we have a lot of our big clients throwing a lot of errors, um, you might end up seeing basically a, a slight delay. We do have a buffering solution in place, so nothing ever gets lost, um, which is the big key, but really uh, what we're working on right now is basically increasing that capacity so that never happens. Um, but we do have solutions in place to make sure, uh, if it does, that your data is safe. Where do we access the logs? Where do we access the logs? You can forward from Syslog. Uh, we work with all the flavors of Syslog. We have several libraries built out for different programming languages, and we uh, have an agent as well. So you can you can really pretty much go at it from almost any way, depending on how your application is set up and what works for your environment. If they're stored in, uh, do you mean S3? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so I believe you should be able to, we actually have, a, we just put out uh, about a month ago, what we call the AWS connector. Uh, and that will actually go out and basically find all your log files in your AWS environment. We'll automatically instrument them and pull them in. Um, and we also are putting out uh, our beta right now of our OpStream tool, which will connect with things like uh, CloudStream, uh, Cloud Sleuth, and all the kind of AWS. Uh, operational data, so uh, so yeah, we can we can grab those, or we should be able to if you get into our data right now. We are a uh, we're SaaS, so uh, with kind of a low entry point, we have a free we have free versions, so uh, you can use our tool completely uh, full featured up to one gig of data a month. Um, after that, uh, it pops up to nineteen dollars a month and kind of tears up. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, for, for a lot of, kind of smaller companies, it's, it's a free tool that does everything. Uh, but, you know, we just we limit how much data you can send. If uh, there was a lawsuit, we're in a lawsuit. Uh, <laughs> if there's a lawsuit, how does your data hold up in court? Or do you have any uh, expert witness type of uh, 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 opportunities? Um, I, I mean, so you, you own your data, so I, I don't know that we no, would. In this ass environment where, where we have SLAs and we have a breach, uh, and we suddenly are, are giving back money, or supposedly giving yep. back money for SLA uh, violations. So we, we have a lot of people, the, the question is how does our data hold up in court for, uh, for compliance issues, SLA uh, handling, stuff like that. Um, I know we have several clients using us for compliance. Uh, 
to basically prove compliance, where they'll hold data for two years for a lot of things like that. Um, so it, it seems to, I mean, it's it's systems data verified and held and you can store as long as you want. So I would assume it would hold up fairly well. We haven't seen it personally that, that I know of, but it should. From what I know. Um, the question is how do we handle masking of sensitive data like social security numbers, credit cards, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so in that case, uh, there's a few ways you can do it. The one that I, I think we're most familiar with is using our agent. Um, you can actually instrument it so it will strip that out on your side uh, so you don't actually ever set up so it never leaves your environment. Any more questions? Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Join Boston New Technology Meetup, sponsor an event or a venue, present your idea, and attend to network with Boston's brightest. Details are at www.bostonnewtech.org and in the video description.